afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Sin City, home of the Las Vegas Fury, as they face the Tulsa Desperados. This is Simulation Football League, week number two, as these two 0-1 uh, teams, excuse me, want to get their first win of the season. Both teams led by very, very young quarterbacks. We have Joseph Green with the Vegas Fury, and we have JQ with the Tulsa Desperados. Alongside me in the booth is none other than Mark Lopez with the color. Mr. Dwayne Schindler and Justin Resai providing the stats. Our producer is Cameron Irvine. And Mark, week number two, week number one was amazing. Hopefully week number two is just as good. What, what do those teams have to do to win this game today? For, for starters, I think Ramos is going to be definitely stopping the run game of Las Vegas. Las Vegas really exploded into the season with 200 rushing yards last week. It's going to be a challenge for Tulsa, uh, who was also unable to really stop Arizona's running offense last week. So we'll see what they do on that end. Uh, on the other end, Las Vegas really has to close out their games. Last week, we saw them go up 27-20 uh, in their game but unable to stop the St. Louis offense, uh, sorry, the San Diego offense and the 14th Street and answered points and they got the L on that one. We'll see if they turn around their fortunes in this game. Las Vegas, a team that historically starts seasons off pretty slowly and then picks up uh, midway through the season. Tulsa coming off a two and 10 season last year trying to be better this season and try to make a playoff push as Vegas, the home team, is going to receive this one. And we are underway from Las Vegas, Nevada. The kick is going to be fielded at the one-yard line, returning it past the 20 and to the 23 is Vegas. And Joseph Green will take the, will take the field for the first time today uh, as we introduce you immediately to the Vegas offense. Joseph Green, the quarterback number seven. Scott Johnson and A-star Miramontes are in the backfield. John Blades, Mason Kirby, and Doug Britton are your wide receivers. The very young tight end core includes Scott Fowle and Jackson Roberts, both picked up this season in the rookie draft. Three wide receivers set, a split backs formation here for the Fury. They're going to throw in their first play. It's going to be a dump off pass, and it's going to be ruled actually incomplete for the benefit of the Vegas Fury, and it's going to bring up a second and ten. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> They're just lucky that was an incompletion because that did not go anywhere. In fact, it went. It would have gone for negative yards. Not a not the ideal way to start, but still two chances on getting that first down. Uh, I'd like to see them really utilize Scott Johnson the way they did last week. Well, it's going to be a two tight end set that will include Scott Fowle and Jackson Roberts overloaded to the left side of the formation. Under center is Joseph Green. He's going to throw again. Uh -oh. the pass goes deep, and it's going to be a fade route, and it's caught. <laughs> For Mason Kirby, if he goes to the 40-yard line, a big play over the top of the defense as, as Joseph Green second attempt is a huge completion. And he really beat Daniel Wright on that route, got himself open. Daniel Wright, still credit him for that tackle because there was just wide open space. That could have been for a touchdown, but still, a huge jump play. That's going to be a stretch play, and that is going to be Scott Johnson well read by the Tulsa defense. And then let's go ahead and go through the Defense of the Desperados, Chris Andrews and Berto de Mora are the defensive ends. Jaden Swift and Jerry Partridge. Uh, well, Jaden Swift is a defensive tackle. Jerry Partridge and Miles Gibson are the inside linebackers. Also, linebackers includes Carson Miller and Philadelphia corner uh, Collins. Corners are Nate Haslip, King Rashid, and Cameron Shaw. Safety is Daniel Wright, Travis Arthur, and Ricky Thornton in the back end. It's going to be a shotgun formation for the first time for Joseph Green. He's going to play fake. The pass is going to deep again, and the pass is oh. going to be almost intercepted just barely by right, and he almost got that one, Mark. Yep, he definitely uh, sort of tried to make up for his uh, missed coverage in that previous play where he allowed big yardage, and this time almost getting the ball himself. It's going to be a bunch formation. It's going to be four wide receivers. And Scott Johnson offset to the left. Joseph Green is going to be under center. He's going to throw. The pass going to be short. Can he get to the sticks? Yes, he can. A great play. Great play design right there. And great execution by the Vegas Fury. That's going to be John Blades, the wide receiver, with his first catch. Great. 
So we take a look at Mason Kirby. It's going to be lined up outside. Two tight ends to the left side of the formation. Joseph Green is under center. Scott Johnson offset to the left. It's going to be another throw. Joseph Green oh. is going to pass to the outside, and the pass is going to be caught. Getting to the sticks, yes. John Blades back-to-back -back catches for first downs. Absolutely, and what a great play getting the ball out of his hands. Joseph Green, he saw the pressure coming straight up his face. Center allowed one defender to get through, but John Green, or Joseph Green, finding his man quick. Big wide receiver set here in this formation is going to be a first and ten already in the red zone for the Fury. Joseph Green's going to pass middle. The pass is going to be caught oh. again. I don't know how he's getting the ball into those tight spaces. And Mason Kirby is going to be ruled shy of the goal line. It's going to be a first and goal. And this is why you have guy, you know, A-star Miramontes. This is why you have Scott Johnson to punch it in. Absolutely. And we might see them just do it that on their first attempt, on, you know, for first and goal. Scott Johnson, 203 yards last week. I formation. And Tulsa is showing like a 3-4 defense. Not enough guys in the line. Scott Johnson is going to walk it in for a touchdown as the Vegas Fury have a dream start. Yep, what a great drive overall from this Las Vegas Fury offense. And Mason Kirby really hauling down those passes. Joseph Green really the spark of that entire drive. Finding his guys left, right, and center. And then just a cherry on top, Scott Johnson. Just showing his scoring chops. He block also as, uh, as well by A-star Miramontes, the fullback. Uh, doing a great job. Uh, stopping the incoming linebacker up the middle. That's true. And we're going to see here the extra point by the Fury. That's going to be Matt Rage. His kick is up and good. Matt Rage last week, two out of three in field goals. With his longest being a 34-yarder, this extra point has no issues. So we're going to take a look at this Tulsa offense for the first time in this game mark and a very young offense and as i said jq the quarterback douglas brown the halfback who had 80 yards and 20 attempts not bad for a debut not bad definitely we'll see if he can do better uh this time around a lot of expectations are on him being the first pick overall but you can't you you'll still take 20 carries 80 yards any day uh they still want to see improvements on his end Here's a guy who's not young to the league. That's Gabriel Manning, who is obviously one of the better returners in league history. Six-time All-Star. Heavy set here for the Tulsa Desperados with a fullback and two tight ends. It's going to be a stretch play to Douglas Brown, and he's going to be wrapped up for no gain on the play as Merrick Itera makes a stop. A good defensive stop right there. Uh, kind of, it's kind of the part of the job as being the first overall pick is that you got a target on your back, and Las Vegas has a target on Douglas Brown's back right now with that tackle for almost no gain. Three wide receiver sets in a split backs formation here for the Desperados. Nickel defense for the Vegas Fury. They're going to run the ball up the middle, and Douglas Brown has better space this time. It's going to be a pickup of five, make it a manageable third down. Better space and better finagling of that space. Douglas Brown find, found the opening he needed and just eked through, picking up that those yardage, as you mentioned. So, you know, we'll see if they're going to run him again in third and five, um, but they might go for a passing play on this one. Yeah, it's a shotgun formation with four wide receivers set. JQ is going to pass, has some time, checks it down to Douglas oh. Brown. Can he get to the sticks? Oh. No, he cannot. Fourth and short, a great job by the Vegas Fury defense making the stop before he got to the first down marker. Douglas Brown was injured as well on the play. He's oh. standing up, so you have, you have to guess whether it's just like a twisted something, you know, something or like a cramp, and it's not going to be too serious. Hopefully it's not, as uh, Douglas Brown, a very key part of this offense, uh, will probably be out for a while. Yeah, I must say, Ramos, that was a great recovery by the defense. There was open space. Some key defensive plays were blocked downfield, but they were able to shed their blocks and make a tackle before Douglas made it first up. But you're unfortunate for the injury. Hopefully he comes back. As Doug Britton gets that return uh, to the 25-yard line, and we are going to see the Vegas offense again. 
you know, Tulsa made, made a good, a couple of good stops um, in the previous drive, but unfortunately they were unable to get off the field on third down as Vegas was able every time to just get past the sticks. It's going to be a near formation here. Joseph Green is going to throw. Green runs out of time, but he gets it away. The pass is incomplete. A good tackle. Well, good hit by the linebacker right there as John Blades was the intended target. Yeah, and we're going to see him. We're going to see John Blades. We're going to see Mason Kirby being targeted a lot this drive as well. They did very successfully the last time around. Overall, 4-4-5 four, four, when those two guys were targeted. Second down, 10 yards to go. It's a shotgun formation again with two backs in the backfield and three wide receivers. Normally a passing formation as Joseph Green will throw. The pass is going to go deep in the corner route and it's going to be hauled in. What a catch by John Blades getting on top and a great throw by Joseph Green making sure only Blades was able to get that one. Absolutely. And Joseph Green, his vision, he knew that his receiver already beat his man, already won his route, and just throws it. And, man, what a catch right there by number 81, John Blades. What a great player this guy is. Absolutely. It's going to be now a bunch set with a tight end also bunched in. That can cause mismatches on a defense. It's going to be a play action. Joseph Green is going to throw the ball up the middle, and the pass is going to be caught again for a gain of... About 12 yards, and John Blades is just absolutely destroying this Tulsa defense so far. Yep, uh, that is about five completions in his last seven attempts. So, Joseph Green seeming unstoppable so far. It's going to be three wide receivers, but two backs in the backfield. This could be either a run or a pass. It's going to be a throw. Joseph Green, deep drop back. Joseph Green is going to run out of time, and it's going to be sacked. For a loss of 10 yards. And on the sack is going to be Chris Andrews, the veteran defensive end. Yeah, absolutely incredible play right here. Joseph Green, play lights out. How do you try to stop him? Well, stop him in front. Give him no time at all to throw the ball. That's what they did. And Chris Andrews, no sacks last week. Coming up with his first sack of the season. Chris Andrews with a speed move right there, just getting around the right tackle with a rip move. It's going to be a straight formation with four wide receivers and a tight end. Joseph Green's going to throw the ball deep, and the pass is going to be intercepted. I think there's going to be an offside right there on the Tulsa side of the field, which is very unfortunate for the Desperados. We're uh, going to take a look at ref R62 for the first time. No, the holding. Ooh. So the panel is going to be declined, and the Desperados have the ball. Oh, no. Man, wow, what a play. I mean, the penalty was unfortunate, but still, the interception was impressive. Very yeah, it was. It was a tip drill. Yep. Yeah, yeah. at first glance, probably I thought, you know, most likely a defensive lineman was just a little bit, you know, uh, ahead of the ball. But no, it's going to be... An interception in possession for the Desperados offense, much needed as Douglas Brown, I don't think, is on the field right now. So we're going to keep an eye on that. It's going to be a pass by JQ. The pass is going to be caught. That's Jason Franz, the tight end. As It seems that uh, King Jack Washington is going to take the bulk of the carries. Um, so we're going to see what happens right there. A pickup of two here on first down. It'll be interesting. It'll be on JQ's shoulders for now. He was only 27 for 41 last week. Two touchdowns, one interception. We'll see if how much they can rely on him reliably this drive. Pass going to go deep, and the pass is going to oh. be tipped around and incomplete. As the pass was intended to Gabriel Manning. Let's finally introduce you here to the Tulsa offense. JQ, the quarterback. Douglas Brown, the running back, is in, on the sidelines being treated by the medical staff. Stephen my Michaels is the fullback, Sansa Robinson, Corey Jones, and DJ Hume, alongside Gabriel Manning, the four wide receivers. Tight ends are Jason France and Jim Copeland Jr. coming from Denver. Uh, it's going to be a four wide receiver set on third and eight. Passing situation for the Desperado offense. JQ has the ball. The pass goes deep again, and the pass is going to be tipped around again. And he did a great job. Back-to-back -back plays by DeVega's Fury defense. And they're going to get a off the field. Mary Gaitera with another Clutch to pass deflection. 
and another three and out not unable to take the most out of that turnover three and out and Tulsa's offense very slow to begin with uh, kind of what was the same image of what was last season definitely not they, they, they were last dead last scoring offense and we'll see this season especially this game if they they can improve on that or if we're gonna see some shades of that uh, season to forget last year. Gonna be a return here by Doug Britton, a decent return to the 43-yard line as a couple of promising Vegas Fury possessions. Uh, the last one came up with an interception. Joseph Green now updated number six of 10, 119 yards uh, with that interception. But, you know, overall he's been pretty good. Absolutely. Well, the coaching staff is going to give him a chance to redeem himself with five wide receivers. Look top of the screen, John Blades, as uh, Joseph Green is going to actually make a change on the play. It's going to be top of the screen to John Blades. His pickup of seven yards brings a second and three. Yep, but John Blades would have wanted maybe more yards on that play. Mm. He, he saw that he had some green space in front of him, but the ball sort of momentum just took him outside. Still a good catch. Still, you know, puts them a second and short. So you take a look at Daniel Wright in a safety position. Splitbacks formation, two wide receivers here for the Fury. They're going to hand the ball off here to Scott Johnson, who's picked up about a couple yards to bring up a third and short. Yep, and this defensive, this linebacker crew just know their assignments. That was number 54, Carson Miller right there. First tackle for tonight and a great stop on an incredible rusher, at least based on last week. Carson Miller last week led the lead, led the, the team, excuse me, in tackles with 10 for this Desperado defense. Going to be a power formation. Scott Johnson has some space outside, but oh, he spins fine. inside. Not great vision right there by Scott Johnson as he's not going to pick up a first down. Credit to the Tulsa defense as well as Collins and company make the stops. going to be fourth and one. And they're going to keep the offense on the field here, Mark. Ooh, interesting choice. Uh, there's a good chance they're just going to try to make the defense jump on offsides, but this will eventually, potentially just end up in burning a timeout. Yeah, I think that's what they're going to do. I mean, it's a very long yard. You know, if it was like fourth and inches, you get it. But that's like a full three feet right there. As, yeah, Joseph Green is going to call a timeout. And Vegas is going to bring their punting unit. And Tulsa defense does a great job making another stop. If you're new to the SFL, the Simulation Football League combines traditional sports, esports, and a role-playing game into one. Team strategies are being executed in real time by our simulation as real-life players compete in the virtual gridiron. For more information about the SFL, about the SFL visit our website at www.simulationfl.net. The SFL, we put the fan in fantasy as the punt. Team is on the field. Seems to be... a. Uh, Pretty good kid with good hang time as Gary Manning is going to let it bounce. Can they pin it deep? And yes, oh, they can. Oh, no, they cannot. Actually, oh. the ball bounced at the goal line, which makes it a touchback. McRack with a very good attempt. But unfortunately, just probably a couple inches too long on that bounce. Man, if he pinned that inside the five, <laughs> that would have been a checkbox in some people's bingo sheets. That was that would have been a potentially huge punt. That could have been, but instead the Tulsa offense gets it at the 20. Uh, JQ is going to hand oh. the ball off. And man, like the for lunch on that one, as the Vegas Fury had the whole defense and the cheerleaders in the back. <laughs> Absolutely. And this defense... This play was over even before the ball was handed off. It's all, it seemed like the entire offensive line just lost all their matchups and the defensive line was right there. That was bizarre. JQ will throw again. The pass is going to be caught. Wide open is going to be the wide receiver. I think it's Corey Jones and Douglas Brown is not going to come back. That's a huge loss for the Tulsa offense. Let's uh, introduce you re real quick to the Vegas defense, Sam Jager. And Anthony Stover at the defensive ends. The defensive tackle is A.K. Jones. 
Linebackers include Joan Osiris, Jacob Solotov, Dabson Bucknot, and Jay Drury. I'm going to mention the rest here in a second. Third and five, three wide receivers here for the Desperado offense. The pass is going to go to Jason France, and it's caught a great job by JQ putting that one. Uh, just to round it out, Lake Laquan Smith, Chris Magel, Mary Gaitera, the corners. Safeties are Justin Rusai, the former Tulsa Desperado, and Nikki Colin Traley. Max Jackson, one of the better safeties the league has ever seen as the strong safety number 37. First and 10 here for the Desperados as the Vegas Fury show press man to man coverage. Q, pump fakes the pass. Inside is going to be almost intercepted, should have been picked. You're right now with Douglas Brown out of the picture for tonight. All eyes now fall on this young quarterback, JQ. Yep. Tonight, six of nine, uh, passing only 34 yards. You know, he had that interception. Sorry, not the interception, the near interception. Um, but if he keeps throwing those dangerous passes, Ramos, I think it becomes an inevitability that an inter turnover happens. Yeah, and this allows Vegas to be more aggressive in the secondary, you know, play press man to main coverage as Steven Mike Michaels actually gets the handoff for a pickup of probably a couple yards. McMichaels has been in a couple teams before, including the Houston Hyenas now for the Tulsa offense. Absolutely, and I, I, I might just be speculating, but I feel like Steven McMichaels was sort of brought in the team as sort of a blocker for their for their huge pick from the from the draft, and now he's being asked to do running duty, not successful. Yeah, the pass, this one is going to be incomplete, unfortunately. Dropped by the wide receiver, Sansa Robinson, who used to be a halfback for this offense and Tulsa will have to punt it again and, and to your point you know Stephen Mike Michaels who is primarily a blocker will probably be asked to be the feature back for this offense um, obviously they do have a backup as I said and Mr. King Jack Washington but Stephen Mike Michaels is the veteran guy in the backfield Punt goes away for Tulsa. Going to be fielded by Britain, and Britain gets it to the 30-yard line. So pretty decent field position again for the Fury offense. The Fury offense, Joseph Green last week, 12 of 21, 189 yards. A touchdown and two picks in a losing effort against the St. Louis Gladiators. Vegas had that game 17-0. And uh, they ended up losing 31 20, 27. Uh, as the handoff this time goes to Scott Johnson. He has a lot of room. Oh, Scott there he goes. blocking. Scott Johnson breaks a tackle. He goes to the 35, oh, to the 30, God. breaks another tackle, to the 20, to the 10. Touchdown, Vegas. <laughs> Put he that in had, the top 10. He has arrived, man. Scott Johnson is incredible last week, was incredible last week, is incredible tonight with that one play alone. He has entered the stadium. He has let his presence known. How many tackles did he break? He broke this one. He broke another one downfield. And then after this one, nobody was able to touch him. Uh, wow, speed. last week. Speed demon. 203 yards. And, uh, man, basically getting about half of that in just one run. Absolutely. He literally changed the complexion of this game and what... Looked like it might be a barn burner, low scoring game, and he just scored one himself in a single play. Unbelievable as the Vegas Fury take a 14 0 lead, and uh, Tulsa, I mean, your rookie running back is out. Um, I don't think you, you have to necessarily, you know, just leave the run. I mean, you still have Steven Mike Michaels in the backfield. Uh, just, just, just to keep the Vegas defense like guessing, especially because Vegas is going to run a lot of press man-to-man -man coverage, a lot of 22 men. So, if, if you want to just run the ball, you may have some success on that. As the kick goes away, and Gabriel Manning, they need something big out of him. The veteran is going to bring it to the 25, tries to reverse field, and it's going to be brought down at the 25-yard line. Yeah, and Jakey might also want to start throwing to his other receiver. So far, no other receptions. Uh, besides Blades and Mason Kirby tonight, uh, there was one target to, you know, his other receivers, but still no other completions. 
It's going to be a two-back set. Jason Franz is spread out as a wide receiver. JQ is going to throw it. The pass is going to be caught by Washington, and Washington fumbles the ball, oh and is being recovered by the Vegas Fury. Not a great start by King Jack Washington, the backup running back. Maybe a little bit of nerves on that one as a good hit provided by the Vegas Fury jars the ball loose. Oh my goodness, and suddenly it's going to turn into a beatdown of a game. They are so close to the end zone as well, and I think Ramos, they might just shove this game down the throats of Tulsa. Let's see what they do. I mean, of course, they are already in field goal range at least. Three wide receivers. You know, normally you're taught when you get that turnover, go for the end zone. And in this side of the field, just try to throw it deep. Joseph Green is going to check it down and oh then picked off and being returned past midfield to the 40-yard line, to the 30, being chased by Doug Britton. Is he going to get there to the 10, to the 5? No, he's not. Touchdown, <laughs> Tulsa. What a change of pace in this game. And what a read, man. King Here. Rashid, the rookie. Oh my goodness, a rookie making a huge play. And you're right, what a read that was. And look at that, he clearly picked that off in stride. And no one could have touched him. That is that. This turns the game around for Tulsa as well. It's what they needed. Their offense was stifled. And where do you get points? You get points from your defense. And suddenly, Unreal. a turnover becomes another turnover into a score. Unbelievable. I mean, and... and as you said, Tulsa will need some of that. You know, either go from the defense or maybe a return by Gabriel Manning. Um, because, you know, Vegas is just um, owning on the defensive side of the ball. But Tulsa makes it a one-possession game. What a play. And if you have any questions whether you can make an impact or not as a rookie, look at that play. Unbelievable. We just had a touchdown from the previous Las Vegas drive. One play later, fumble by Tulsa. One play later, pick six. <laughs> and ooh, what a game. What a turn of events. And we are not even done past the first quarter. As oh, Doc God. Brennan is going to bring it back from the end zone, past the 20, and to the 24-yard line. You could argue this game has the two best returners in football. Doug Britton has been an all-star, and Gabriel Manning has been an all-star more times than I can count as well, uh, you know, returning punts and kicks. So I will not be shocked if we see one of those going to the house today by either team. Scott Johnson, five carries, 70 yards. Started off slowly, but that one, that last carry was just an absolute doozy. Joseph Green is going to throw the ball deep, and the pass is going to be incomplete. Oh, my. Again, Thornton with the pass deflection and this Tulsa defensive backfield is just playing lights out here over the last couple minutes of play. Yeah, and you said it was a deflection in my eyes. It almost looked like right. an incompletion by Thornton himself. It like it looked like he dropped the ball. He could have gotten it for an interception, but great stop right there. That was a dangerous pass by Joseph Green. Yeah, great effort by the defensive back. It's three wide receivers by Joseph Green again. It's going to hand the ball off now to Scott Johnson, who has some room. The run goes for a pickup of seven yards, making a magical third and three. I was unable yeah. to catch that number of that defensive player, but you're right, a lot more room for him. It could have been a huge game. End of one, and this has been a very exciting matchup. 14-7, but the Tulsa Desperados have momentum of the game. Don't go anywhere. Back here in Las Vegas, Nevada, home of the Las Vegas Fury, a beautiful venue. I mean, there, there's a there's a huge bird that covers like 50,000 seats. Wow. But a good venue as this Gary goes for no gain, actually loses about three yards, and Jaden Swift makes the TFL. Tulsa, man, I'm telling you, they're getting momentum of the game, and you know they just need an explosive play from Gabriel Manning or somebody. On yeah. offense. Absolutely. You're right about momentum. And it's funny because this game, momentum seemed like it was on Las Vegas side after only one play. And then two plays later, now it seems like Tulsa has the momentum. And with an entire second quarter left to play, it's going to be interesting what Tulsa has in the bag 
you know, I feel like a majority of their offense gone when uh, Douglas Brown went down. But yeah. you know, it's still a, it's still Jake. He's still a young quarterback. He probably still has more to prove in himself. Ramos, I think he sure. still wants to play well, and we're gonna see him play well hopefully in this draft. Yeah, thankfully for JQ, I mean, he's a young quarterback, but he does have a lot of veterans in that receiving core. Look for Gary Manning top of the screen on an out route. There's a lot of room. There it is, Gary Manning. He's going to pick up four yards, make it a second down. Yeah, and you're right. With these veterans, it's it's going to be a matter of, you know, JQ's job will be just scan and look where are his openings. Where, where Which veterans have beat their, their man and throw it to my veterans. I can trust their hands. And JQ just doesn't, just don't overthrow or underthrow for those interceptions. Two backs in the backfield, two wide receivers, and Jason Friends as a wide. Under center, JQ is going to throw. The pass going to be a check down to King Jack Washington, and he is demolished in the backfield again as Day Drury makes the stop. Third and seven. It seemed, it seemed like his offensive line could, is, you know, was able to give him more seconds. I feel like JQ could have made that play develop a bit more see if he can make a downfield throw but it is what it is uh hopefully this doesn't turn into another third and out they've seen too much of that this game press man of main coverage four wide receivers jq has time hey, the pass is caught wow. great job fantastic job by jq buying time dj hume with that catch up to midfield yep dj hume with a good catch right there his first catch for tonight and yeah, oh look at that! He also cut back outside and made himself open. So of course, Jakey would throw it to his open man. I think that's the point of this game plan, you know, make some receivers run open routes and then just JQ find your open receivers. Yeah, that's that's a tough ask for Laquan Smith, the corner rookie, uh, picked up in the third round from Memphis. Um, just you know, covering that out route for so long is it's not it's not an easy job. Three wide receiver set here for JQ. He's going to throw a lot of time again. He has to check it down, but the pass oh. is deflected by the defensive end. Great job by the big guy. And you're taught, Mark, if you cannot get to the quarterback, just put your hands up. I mean, you're like six foot ten. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, yeah, you, you can cover the entire field with your hands. Yeah, we're talking about catch radius. These guys have huge blocking radius. Just, yeah, you're right. Just put your hands yeah. up. Wave it around. Just massive wingspans. Um, second and ten, the ball at midfield. Three wide receivers. JQ will throw it. There's a check down. King Jack Washington has some space. He gets up uh, three yards on the play. Not too bad. Make it a third and seven coming up. Yeah, this is another interesting third down. We've third and seven. Their longer third down attempts. One of their longer third down attempt. That is not third and ten. But... You know, he might throw again. You might see them replicate the play that gave them the first down previously. Another bunch formation, a shotgun from JQ. He's going to throw. The rush comes in, but the pass is going to be deep, and it's oh, caught nice. past the defense as Merrick Kaitera didn't look for the ball. I mean, kudos to Sansa Robinson making a one-handed grab. He had a drop uh, not too long ago, now making a fantastic one-handed catch. And JQ just throws a rainbow to his wide receiver. Yeah, that was you know that was patience overall by this entire unit, just allowing that route to progress that well and deep and open. And JQ just found, you know, his man and incredible. Now the handoff goes to King Jack Washington. Has a little bit of space. Gets about a couple of yards. Do you have a hot take? Want to show your appreciation for the SFL or show more some love to your teammates? The league's new show, SFL Crunch Time, wants to hear from you. Post a video on Twitter with your take or shout out, uh, shout out and use the hashtag, hashtag SFL Crunch Time, and you may just appear on the show this week. One more details, direct message, Josh Circle on Discord. We'll see you in Crunch Time. It's going to be another handoff, King Jack Washington, with just a little bit of a gap, gets two. And suddenly the last two third downs gives you confidence with this offense. Especially with JQ and finding the right person to convert for a first down. We'll see who is going to be the man of the hour for JQ. And we'll see if he can even complete this one. Third and six. Three wide receiver set. Look for Jason Franz on this one. Play action fake. 
pass. Middle is going to be incomplete in double coverage. Corey Jones was the intended target. It's we have fourth down, but man, Tulsa can get at least a field goal and make it a four-point game after being down 14-0. Yeah, and I like, I really like the attempt in the first place. At, at the very least, it didn't seem like it would have been picked off, you know, thrown low. Uh, but you know, it was just a double coverage, unfortunate for them. But you're absolutely right. Just put points on the board. Las Vegas has been lights out on defense, so get any points you can get. The kicker Brooke Wiesel trying to get his uh, first field goal of the career. All from one last week. The kick is up and it's good. Tulsa puts three more on the board. It's 14 to 10. And I'm sorry, I say him uh, is uh, her, Brooke Wiesel. It's a field goal. Congratulations to Miss Brooke Beasel on getting her first field goal of her career. Hopefully many, month to, many more to come as the kick goes away and it's been fielded at the goal line. Doug Redden returns it to the 24. And Vegas will have possession of the football. I mean, Tulsa defense has been very good in this past couple of drives, Mark. Uh, let's see if Vegas can string a good drive together. Yeah, we, it almost feels like we haven't seen Las Vegas in forever. There was the pick six, and then there was the three and out, and then the stand play 51 yard drive by Tulsa really, you know, shaved a lot of time out of the clock. Joseph Green will throw, the pass goes middle, the pass is gonna be caught. I think that's uh, Mr. John Blades, yes it is. As Joseph Green, 146 yards, has two interceptions, but has done a couple of those very, very good throws. Yeah, I mean, why not throw to John Blades, catching five of seven targets already with almost almost hitting the century mark with 96 yards tonight. So yeah, you know, number one receiver tonight, just feed the man the ball. Yeah, absolutely. He's been by far the primary target of Josie Green as six out of the eight completions have gone to Mr. John Blades, number 81. It's gonna be another hand of Scott Johnson. This is the play that he scored in. This time, Tulsa does a better job. Only a pickup of four yards. Yeah, they had to bring more people as well on that play, uh, number 85 and number 86, to add on the tackle. And that's kind of what Tulsa might want to do to just stop Scott Johnson. Uh, I'm, I also start. It also first starts in reading that run play. Bunch formation for the Vegas offense. A pass over the middle is going to wow. be a wow, one-handed grab right there. And to pick up a first down is Mr. Doug Britton. As, you know, we look at the past drives for Vegas. You know, they went 38 yards, had to punt. Uh, they suffered a pick six. And, um, you know, that's been, that's been the last two drives. Prior to that, it was a 70-yard rush touchdown by Scott Johnson. This is going to be shotgun straight. Four wide receivers and a tight end. Look top of the screen to Mason Kirby. Pass is going to be outside. Kirby with a catch. One-handed grab. Styling. Four <laughs> yards. Yep, you're right. And it's, those bunch formations really opens up a lot for you know the receivers. You, you're, you're sort of overloaded in defense trying to guard too many people in the same spot. And just you know routes like that, Mason Kirby runs out easy pickings for this Las Vegas offense. Second and six, ball at the 34 yard line, the handoff goes to Scott Johnson, who gets about a couple, puts the Fury in scoring position, third down coming up. And yeah, number 58, Miles Gibson in that tackle, another one in that tackle, who else but King Rashid as well to add to that. King Rashid, the one with a pick six earlier in the game. Joseph Green is three out of three in this possession, in this drive. Two tight end set, third and four. He's going to hand the ball off. Johnson, can he get to the sticks? Oh yes, he can, and many more. To the 10, to the five. Touchdown, Fury. Oh, my goodness. I want to see a replay of that because besides Scott Johnson, there was a huge block on the oh end. Oh, my God. What a sealed edge that was. Man, Mr. Scott Fowler and Mr. Jackson Roberts deserve a game ball. 
because, man, as Vince Lombardi will say, as Coach Lombardi will say, seal here, seal there, run it up in the alley. Touchdown, Fury, 20 to 10. What a drive. Yeah, what a, by the what a home team. Holy crap. That was a beautiful, just everything was beautiful about that one single play. And now Las Vegas extending their lead. We knew they would be dominating, or at least we expected them to do well. But suddenly they have grabbed momentum back. And extra point is good. You know, look, Scott Fowle, Jackson Roberts, they've been quiet today. You know, they're, they're, they're rookie players, rookie tight ends, especially Jackson Roberts. You know, mostly you could say coming in as a, as a blocking tight end. And, uh, and this is exactly how you play as a team. It's just everybody contributing uh, to put the ball in the end zone, whether you're catching the ball or not. And the yeah. Vegas have, Fury have a, an 11 point lead as Matt Rage is gonna kick it off and being fielded again by Mr. Gerald Manning. Always dangerous, past the 20 to the 26 as Max Jackson, wow, what a, what a collision. Max against Gabriel Manning, about 12 All-Stars combined between those two guys. 13 to make, to, to be exact. First down, Tulsa. Yeah, with four and a half minutes left, their previous drive did take a lot of time as well. We'll see if they finish the half with the ball in their hands. That last drive that they had was uh, about four minutes as well. So we'll see. Yep. JQ will throw it out to Gabriel Manning, who's picked up about four yards on that one. Merrick Itera with the stop. You know, more than enough time here, Mark, for Tulsa. You know, four minutes, 19 seconds to go. Um, you know, they can take their sweet time as they did on the previous drive and try to get more points before the half is over. And I think it's also going to boil down to getting themselves to better third down situations. A lot in the previous drive was third and medium, third and long. You know, give JQ more of an opportunity to convert easier. I agree. King Jack Washington is going to get absolutely nowhere as the Vegas defense is all over it. And it's going to be a third and long. A third and long, but he still has his targets. JQ still has his targets. Uh, uh, you know, Gabriel Manning, not a lot of yards tonight so far, but he still is, you know, a top receiver historically. JQ to throw, goes middle, the pass is going to be caught, that sounds a rock. Been crucial in this second quarter, picking up another first down. Good job by the Desperado offense. Yeah, Sanzo Robinson, that would, that's his second reception in five targets. Sanzo Robinson, by the way, zero reception, zero targets in, the, in last week. So, underutilized last week, sure, but tonight he is getting these first downs. Mr. Jacob Solotov um, leads the team right now in tackles. Last week he only had three tackles. Now up to six. Second year man uh, coming from the Jacksonville Kings franchise. Uh, heavy set. King Jack Washington has a lot of room. King Jack wow. Washington has seven yards. Good blocking by the Tulsa Desperado offenses. Stephen McMichaels was leading the way. And uh, second and short. Yeah. This guy, even though he's a backup, he's showing that, you know, backups do matter. And that was just a solid play. You're right. The blocking was there. It was schemed out well. And what a good situation for second down. Another handoff. King Washington. King Manjo. Oh, no, it again. Who got the ball? And I, I think the, the Tulsa offense has it. The offensive okay. lineman. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Wow. I mean, Ramos, if you're a Tulsa fan, you must be oh. having heart attacks right now. That's oh my two God. in a row. Archer Pine, the center. Kudos to the big man. You know, he centers the ball, he blocks, and he's aware of the situation and jumps on the ball. First down and 10, though, for JQ and company. The pass outside is going to be ruled a catch by Gerald Manning. I do think he was able to drag both feet in bounds, and it's going to be second and six. And uh, Tulsa, you could tell, you know, you could say they're you know, right there in the fringes of field goal range, Mark. Yeah, but you, they have been here and in their previous drive. They just want to improve on that drive and score a touchdown this time. This this score, this lead might get out of control otherwise. Two-minute warning from Vegas. 21-10. The Fury lead the Desperados. 
Don't go anywhere. This is the SFL on Twitch. Heavy set formation. It's a power eye. King, Je uh, King Jack Washington in the backfield. Handoff straight up the gut. Washington has a little bit of space. A pickup of three yards on that one. And uh, it's going to you know, be a third and three. And, you know, I don't think they're going to do it. But you have to wonder, that will, will Tulsa think of putting Sansa Robinson in the backfield? He used to be the, back, the, the running back for the Desperados. Mm. Has experience as a running back. Um, or at least try to get it like a, um, you know, West Coast style offense. Use some short passes to Robinson and, you know, allow him to do something. This is going to be a throw to Gary Manning. A great play call right there by the Desperado offense picking up a first down. And probably one of their favorite play calls tonight has been that out route to Gabriel Manning for a short yardage gain. And a perfect use in this situation because you're third and short. You know, that play suddenly opens the books for another first down. And you get three more downs, three more attempts. Two wide receivers and a tight end. King Jack Washington has the ball and pushes forward for a pickup of four yards. Not a bad run by the backup running back as the Tulsa offense will go in a huddle. JQ likes the mismatch on the defense, I guess. Q with time to throw the pass. Middle is going to be almost picked off. Drury, I'm pretty sure, was the man uh, in coverage. And it's going to be... Uh, no, check that. That's going to be, uh, again, um, Zolotov with the PD. And it's going to be third and six. It, 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 that play kind of shows you what you're talking about, about getting these tight ends and these fullbacks who are blocking for them. And JQ had time, but it was a good defensive deflection. You deep drop back, passes to the end zone, the pass is oh. and almost intercepted. If Corey Jones turns around, it's probably a touchdown. But Max Jackson does a great job one-on-one -on -one against the wide receiver. Not easy, uh, even though Max Jackson is, uh, you know, like six-time All-Star. Um, not easy to cover a wide receiver one-on-one -on -one when you're a safety. Oh man, now they're bringing out the kicking unit and sure this will cut the score potentially down to eight points. That is only a single score, but oh, that was a missed opportunity. Yes, yes it was. I mean, Tulsa does get the ball to start the second half, so you know, if they can double down on, on, a, on points here and points to start the second half, that's going to be good as Beasel's kick does go up and it's going to be good. A tough snap by the long snapper, but a good job overall by the, Fur uh, by the Desperados, excuse me to put that in and three points for Tulsa 21-13. So Mark, if you're Vegas, I mean, I, I think it will depend on the term. What do you do? Do you take it to the half? Do you try to take a deep shot, try to get more points? I think we see just maybe one or two more plays uh, maybe hand it off to Scott Johnson. If Scott Johnson can create and suddenly flip the field you know, then suddenly the playbook yeah. becomes open. I do agree. Yes, Doug Britton is going to bring it back to the 24. And I agree with, with your statement. I mean, Scott Johnson has a 70-yard touchdown run. Uh, so you, you could argue he's kind of your Hail Mary option uh, a little bit on the ground. Because, you know, if he gets some blocking and gets some open space, he can be gone. So yep. we'll, we'll see what he can do first and 10. Uh, we'll, we'll see if, if they give the ball to him. Two wide receivers and a tight end. That's Scott Fowl. That's a Y out. They gave the ball to Johnson and he tries to spin. It's gonna go for just a gain of four yards. And I think the Vegas Fury is content with an eight point lead. That seems to be the case and who wouldn't be the way they played. You know, there was that big six, but still a solid overall first half from their offense. Joseph Green may snap the ball one more time. Yes, he will. The pass goes outside. It's going to be caught for just some pad, you know, stat padding. Pick up a five yards to Mason Kirby. And that's the end of the first half. A very exciting first half of play as the Vegas Fury leads by one possession only. 21-13 over the Tulsa Desperados. A Desperados offense mark that doesn't have Douglas Brown. That started off losing 14-0. 
but they have shown a lot of resilience and a lot of heart. And I think that is the key word, resilience. They showed resilience, you know, th th there was a big six, but also in the drives where they got their two field goals, it was, it seemed like that the defense would have gotten off the field, but JQ, you know, more often than not, found some key plays, some key passes, kept the ball moving forward enough to get those six points. Now I think Ramos, you know, they really need to kick it up a notch in the second half because this lead at the rate they're going is going to take them a long while. They're just going to keep giving Las Vegas an opportunity to keep this lead looming. Um, and yeah, I think I think that might be the key stat is convert on those drives. Let's let's uh, let's not settle for field goals. Let's get them touchdowns. Yeah, I do agree. I mean, the only touchdown that Tulsa has is pick six by Mr. King Rashid. As um, you know, King Jack Washington has had a, a couple of fumbles. Uh, one was recovered by the Vegas Fury. Fortunately for Tulsa, that did not mean into points for the Fury. Instead, it meant points for the Desperados with that pick six by King Rashid, as you're looking at there on the screen. And, and the other fumble was recovered by the center, uh, luckily for the Desperado offense. This is probably JQ's best throw of the game, right over the head of Mary Kaitera and Sanso Robinson making the catch. Um, but, you know, I, I, the game, again, started 14 nothing ever since. Desperados, you know, lead 13-7. So that has to be a little bit encouraging for the Desperados, especially because they're going to get the ball to start a third quarter. Absolutely. It, that's going to definitely be a confidence booster. You're right, Ramos. We roll along the rest of the highlights. Uh, Miss Brooke Biesel has... Two field goals, two out of two, and one out of one on the extra points after having a tough game last week against the Arizona Scorpions. But we are gonna kick it away with mad rage and none other than Gabriel Manning, fresh off halftime, will return this one. This is a pretty short kick to the five yard line. Mr. Gabriel Manning returns it past the 20. Past the 35, excuse me, past the 30 and to the 31 yard line. Good field position by the Tulsa Desperado offense. And I think that for Tulsa, Mark, they, they have to like establish some sort of like West Coast style offense. Don't get away completely from King Jack Washington, but at the same time, those outs, those quick short uh, passes to your wide receivers, I think that's going to be the, you know, bread and butter of your offense. I do agree with that one. Four wide receiver set. King Jack Washington has some space. Picks up four yards. A good job by Tulsa's offensive coordinator. You know, you put four wide receivers. Uh, the defense goes dime. They think it's a pass. You go with a run up the middle. It's a soft box, and you pick up four yards. I think it's a good job on first down. Absolutely. Good start right here. You kind of still miss uh, Douglas Brown. You imagine if it was Douglas Brown, he probably could have gotten double the amount of yards. But still, for what they have on the field right now, that was still a solid start. Three wide receivers in the tight end on the formation. Washington gets another handoff. He just goes back to the line of scrimmage. Visit the SFL website at simulationfl.net for links to apparel from Sector 6, the official apparel provider of the Simulation Football League, and SFL mini helmets from 97 Sports Promotions. Sector 6 features replica team jerseys and completely customized uh, jackets, flags, T-shirts, and more. Get the gear the fans wear with Sector 6, 97 Sports Promotions, and the SFL. Check on formation. Three wide receivers. Play action by JQ. Throws it outside. Can he get to the sticks? They're oh. going to rule it. Yes. Ooh. This should be challenged by the Vegas Fury. Uh, you know, Corey Jones tried to strike the ball, but I think the defense was there to make the stop just about a half yard shy. What do you think, Mark? Yeah, I kind of agree with that, Ramos. It didn't look like to me that he actually crossed the line. But, oh, it doesn't look like they're challenging and they're just going to let it go. Okay. Okay, I mean, you know, kind of, kind of a head scratcher because it was third down. You know, if it was second down, you know, you know, yeah. third and in inches, or okay, but it was third down. It was to get off the field. As King Jack Washington has some space and low key has had a little bit of room over the last probably ten minutes of play. Second and five coming up. Yeah, before that play, he already had like around twenty six yards. So you know, considerable amount of yards that he's contributing so far and right there once again another good run to start this first down 
Handoff. Washington gets one more to the 47. Make it a third and four situation as Dave Drury, who's been in the league forever, <laughs> makes the stop. Yeah, Tulsa really playing keep away offense right now. Just run, run, pass, run, run, pass. And this is very likely going to be another pass play. You know, it, it's a good idea to keep the Las Vegas dynamic offense off the field. There you go. Gary Manning, six yards, first down. Dave Drury has been on the league for seasons. This is fourth year with the Vegas Fury. I remember him with the OKC Renegades um, way back in the day. Yeah, and, I remember I remember that team when they still existed. Yeah. yeah obviously, OKC became the Arizona Scorpions. Uh, Arizona, one of the best teams in the NSFL right now over the last couple of seasons. Four wide receivers set as JQ will throw the ball again. The pass goes deep and the pass oh, accepted Merrick. No. And, that's, and that's the film study, uh, you know, just getting into halftime. Just, you know, your coach gives you some some things, you know, gives you gives you some nuggets. Uh, this is double coverage. They were expecting that pass. It was a pass that Sansa Robinson burnt uh, Merrick Itera over the top in the first half. This time, both Nikki Collin Trelli and uh, Merrick Itera will play in bracket coverage, which is basically making a sandwich of Sansa Robinson. They get an interception. Mm -hmm. And that was a tough call. JQ, unfortunately, unable to see that coverage as it happened and makes the terrible throw. Scott Johnson will get the handoff. A good job right there by the Tulsa defense making a stop in the backfield. Um, overall, Scott Johnson will get a pickup of four. Uh, make it a second and six. And even if you remove the 70-yard touchdown by Scott Johnson, still he has, you know, 52 yards in 12 attempts. That's still about four and a half yards per carry, which is still solid. Scott Johnson again. He's going to pick up three more on the play as Andrews and company make the stop. Good job by the defensive line of the Desperados going outside and making the stop. They're in short coming up. Absolutely, you're right, Ramos, and that's kind of what this defensive this defense has to do. You know, put more and more bodies on Scott Johnson. Is he going on the edge? Will everyone rush over to the edge to stop this guy at any cost? Joseph Green will pass deep drop back. The pass goes outside and it's caught for a first down and many more yards. Pin move past the 40 and to the 39-yard line is Mason Kirby. Mason Kirby, of course, most known, uh, you know, when he was with the Seattle Tyrants, had that miracle catch against the, in that time, Alaska Storm in the playoffs first down. I, yeah, just good route running right here, Ramos, overall by Mason Kirby. And Mason Kirby and John Blades have all, or sorry, have 183 of the 190 yards of Joseph Green. So those two guys really putting on the heat in terms of the passing offense. Absolutely. Joseph Green will throw it again, and the pass goes to Doug Britton this time for a pickup of five yards and make it a second and five. You know, and for Vegas, last season, uh, they, they did start off slowly 0-3. Uh, they made a run to get to the playoffs, and they were a very you know dangerous team coming into the playoffs. You know, this time you have to think of instead of going 0-3, they can go 2-1. One, even one and two, uh, they could be, be, be better served off and get a better seed in, in order to make another playoff push. And there's going to be another handoff. Scott Johnson with some space. It's going to be a first down to the 24. Yeah, good recovery by the defense right there, collapsing on him at the end of that tail end of that run. Many times we see Scott Johnson, as soon as he finds open space, breaks tackle um, and goes for the end zone. This time, a lot of safeties around. There's number 21 right there, um, among other defenders. That was number 21, Nate Heslam. First and 10, ball at the 24-yard line. It's going to be four wide receivers set for the Fury offense. John, uh, uh, Joseph Green, excuse me, is going to throw the ball short. Mason Kirby gets rocked for a pickup of five yards. Yeah, Mason Kirby just cutting into the inside, and suddenly your linebackers are overloaded with two people cutting in the middle of the field. Who do they defend? Well, Joseph Green just chose Mason Kirby. Makes four third and 
medium, or sorry, second and medium. A wide receiver set, two tight ends in the backfield with uh, Scott Johnson who's gonna get a handoff. Scott Johnson get down. The same exact play mark where they scored and you know, Jackson Roberts and Scott Fowle had an unbelievable blocking on the outside. Same call here inside the red zone, this time for a first down. Yeah, I'd say, I'd even go as far as say same, like almost same result because it's just that the safeties were there at the last minute to stop the run. Pass oh. middle, I don't know how, man. I don't know how he got it to Mason, but it's another first and goal for the Fury offense. And wow. What a what a throw by Joseph Green! It's like Mason Kirby has magnetic hands. The ball just sticks to his hands, no matter where he where the ball goes. It's just in Mason Kirby's lap, and you know now they're here. Kudos to Mason Kirby. Joseph Green is gonna throw again. Pass oh, middle. Oh, oh, what God. a pass! Touchdown Fury! What a throw! Leading his receiver on the quick slant route. That's Mason Kirby on top of the linebacker, just where the receiver could get it. And Mason Kirby, of course, stretching out his hands and makes the amazing catch right there for another touchdown. And boy, pouring it on, this Las Vegas offense is now up huge. Yeah, back to where they were about a couple quarters ago. They, they started off 14 nothing. They again have a 14-point lead, so to be a 15-point lead with Matt Rage's extra point, which is up and good. 28 to 13, and if there's a good time for a Gary Manning return, it's right now. Absolutely. Their their offense has been stifled. Um, Tulsa has been bleeding interceptions as of late. There was that one interception in their previous drive. Uh, their defense is leaking scores themselves. So really, it looks to me like the special teams might be somewhere they, you know, they might have a chance in. It goes away. It's going to be a short kick to the five-yard line. Garrett just to the 27 as Jackson Roberts, the rookie, makes the tackle. And, you know, this is something that Vegas has all, have always had, Mark. Great special teams. Uh, you know, Max Jackson returning. Now it's Doug Britton returning and McRack and, and, and you know, Rage and... They're really good. America Terra used to play like you know he used to block many punts back in the day. Just great special teams all around. As uh, JQ is gonna throw the ball to Stephen Mike Michaels this time, he gets four yards and goes out of bounds at the 30 second down. Goal. And it's you know the longer this game goes, Ramos and with this score lead just keeping on going up and up and up, I think you know it, it becomes so much more pressure for Tulsa to make. You know, bigger plays, bigger passing plays. They're kind of pressured to make those riskier, aggressive plays downfield, kind of which is not their identity. They have been, right? East, you know, structured to be a rushing play and then make short passes. Washington is going to get another handoff. Goes for three yards, and you're right. I mean, they they have had a couple of good throws to Sansa Robinson deep, uh, but they have not involved. And this is something that I've always uh, you know, had, you know, uh, questions is why do they not put, you know, Gary Manning to row some post routes, deep corners, try to get the top exactly. of the defense. Um, you know, yeah. he is one of the most talented players in the SFL. Well, look at that. His pass is going to be incomplete. I mean, they try to they try to go deep uh, with Gabriel Manning. This time it's going to be well defended by Mary Cartera. It's going to be fourth down and uh, right on cue, as in JQ. Uh, <laughs> it goes deep, and but the pass is incomplete. Fourth down. Good job by the Vegas Fury offense. Defense, excuse me. Yeah, but I also feel like that throw was kind of underthrown because Gabriel Manning it did have an open. He was kind of open, but a little bit underthrown. The defender saw that pass coming, and you're right. A deflection, a stop on what could have been a huge play. Pond is almost blocked, but it's going to be up and away a decent kick. And it's going to be fair caught by Doug Britton. I mean, yep. Vegas, I, I, at least in my opinion here, Mark, uh, I think they have to establish Scott Johnson even more. You know, uh, last week he had 34 carries. I think he, they need, he needs about 15 more. Yep. And with a situation, burn some clock, he's the best bet. 
Three wide receiver set. Scott Johnson gets the ball, breaks the tackle. Scott Johnson spin moves. Scott Johnson finally brought down by the back of the jersey. They're not going to call any horse collar tackle right there. I think it was by the nameplate. So I think it's all good in that. First down, Fury. And number 34, Daniel Wright, able to slow him enough at the end for the next tackler, number 54, Carson Miller. Take Scott Johnson down because Ramos, that looked like it would have been all the way to the end the way Scott Johnson was running. I do agree with that. That was one broken tackle away from being a house call as Joseph Green gets four wide receivers in a tight end this time. He's going to throw. The pass goes deep. It's a post right and the pass Sorry. is caught again. John Blades puts the Vegas Fury offense in scoring position. And, man, Joseph Green has had a heck of a game uh, ever since those two interceptions. Yeah, and John Blades, what a route he run. He beat his man. He run just beneath the safety. And that was just enough room for Joseph Green to throw the ball to his chest. And what a catch right there. Another three wide receiver set for the Fury. They like to run out of this formation. They're going to pass this time, though. It's going to be a pass over the middle, and John it? Blades has oh it again. My. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, Joseph Green has been placing these balls in absolute just phone boots. It's, it's, it's crazy the accuracy that he's throwing the ball right now. Mm -hmm. Yep, the accuracy is impressive, as well as the fact that uh, between Blades and Kirby, there has only been four drops in 20, you know, targets. It's going to be Scott Johnson this time, but it's being brought uh, down behind the line of scrimmage. A loss of one yard uh, as Jaden Swift and company make the stop. Uh, you know, 15-point game right now, Mark. Um, Vegas with a field goal gets it, gets it up to a three-possession lead. Um, you know, Tulsa, I think, really needs a turnover right now. Yep, absolutely. That is sort of their only ticket back into this game because it is looking dire. Green to pass. A lot of time is oh. going to go. A toe drag swag from John Blades puts the ball at the four-yard line and a first and goal for the Fury. Carson Miller, I felt like he read that pass coming his way. He read the ball, you know, going to that player, but unable to be fast enough to make a deflection of some sort. And suddenly... They are in very good scoring position. Three different Vegas skill players over 100 yards now. Handoff. Scott Johnson. He's oh one my. of them. Scott Johnson gets two. Scott Johnson has over 150 yards. Mason Kirby with 149. John Blades with 108. It's just been an absolute display of offense here for the Fury today. Yeah. This triple unicorn threat right there. I mean, why not, right? John Blades, yeah. Mason Kirby, of course. This Tulsa defense, again, only three defensive linemen in the formation, so it's a soft box. It's going to be a handoff. Scott Johnson pushes the pile. He's going to be just shy. I think his knee touched as he was trying to stretch the ball. I think he's just about a couple inches shy. But you just give it back to Scott Johnson. It's just Absolutely. He's got three touchdowns on the day. Let's see if he can get number four. The top of the screen. Look, there's a top in and there's no Sparato there. Scott Johnson walks it in. Touchdown, Fury. Yep. Making it look easy. That's what he has been doing all week, even last week, with his scoring display and running display. Making it look easy. And Las Vegas all set to securing this game. That might be the first dagger into... A huge play, a huge showing by this Las Vegas offense. Scott Johnson getting to 20 carries, over 150 yards, and four rushing touchdowns. Matt Rage will be in for the extra point, which is up and through. 35 to 13, the home team flexing the muscles. And, um, you know, for the Tulsa team, obviously they don't have Douglas Brown. I, I think it's a process here, Omar. You know, last season it, it was it was a down year, 2-10. Um, they, they got a couple of high draft picks. King Rashid, I mean, I just had a pick six. So they, the talent is 
definitely there. It's just a matter of time for the progression and all that good stuff right. to to kick in and and be just a powerhouse. As Gary Manning tries to reverse field again, as the second time he's tried to do that and unsuccessful as Max Jackson and company are on the tackle. Yeah, you're right about um, this Tulsa situation right now. I think also it's like you're trying to build more chemistry. You have yeah. a new running back, and because of that, they might be restructuring some of their offense around their star running back, you know, potential star running back. He's the first pick after all. Um, and, you know, there, there's going to be some shifts. There's going to be some changes, growing pains. So you're right. Absolutely. This pass is going to be knocked down. And uh, Gary Manning with, was the entire target. Yeah, I mean, when you look at the coaching staff by the Tulsa uh, Desperados, they do have Berto Lamora and Jaden Swift as offensive and defensive coordinators, respectively. Uh, you know, I have a lot of respect for those two coaches. And I think they, you know, with time and with more seasons, they will get more experience under their belt and, and just, you know, explode. Because, again, talent is there. Uh, Gary Manning, DJ Hume. Uh, you have Sansa Robinson converting from running back to wide receiver. And... Douglas Brown, uh, it, it just needs to, you know, create some chemistry. Absolutely. Three wide receivers set here by the Desperado offense. Single back, JQ throws it inside. The pass is caught. Jason France, another one of those very young players. Uh, one of the better tight ends in the SFL minor league a couple seasons ago. As this is the end of the third quarter. Fury up by 22. 35 to 13 over the Desperados. Don't go anywhere. Back here in Vegas, first and ten coming up for the Fury off uh, for the Desperado offense. Excuse me, JQ will throw a pass, caught, no incomplete. Corey Jones unable to hang on. Second and, uh, and ten coming up. Yeah, you still you gotta credit the Las Vegas offense. We're kind of it might seem that on the booth we are kind of saying that this Tulsa offense has been, you know. You know, below average or subpar, but really Las Vegas defense has been, you know, on the money with the deflections, the interceptions. You know, they forced two fumbles, by the way, um, recovered one of them. So, yeah, this defense as well for Las Vegas, pretty good. Yes, it has. You know, the tackling has been outstanding this time. Chris Magel on, on Gabriel Manning as Manning has some open space, but a good open field tackle. And if there's a guy that is difficult to stop in the open field, it's Gary Manning. I mean, he, he's made a living uh, returning kicks and punts, which is all running in the open field. Um, so has a lot of moves on, on his arsenal. Eye formation. And the ball is going to go to the running back. King Jack Washington is going to go nowhere. It's fourth down. And um, would you go for it? I mean, at this point, with this score difference, you know, if you don't go for it, what's going to happen? Las Vegas will just burn the clock with Scott Johnson. So why not go for it? I would agree. However, they're going to punt the ball away. Uh, down 22 points. That's three touchdowns. I mean, we still have the, the entire fourth quarter, but you need to get points right now as the kick goes up and has been fielded by Doug Britton. Britton gets it to the 23-yard line only. A good job by Daniel Wright and company with it. Get coverage. Let's see. Turnover. Turnover, Tulsa. That's what they need. They're looking for turnovers now. Uh, sure. Interception. Uh, fumble. Maybe a strip sack. We'll see. Yeah. No, I, I, I totally agree on that. They're going to be playing very aggressively. Look for Scott Johnson. There it is. Scott Johnson, but well read. By the Tulsa defense, I think that was Berto de Mora. Yeah, the defensive end with a big tackle. And if he gets past that line of defense, I think Scott Johnson may have number five on the day. Yeah, they, they, well, they did stop, stack the box right there. Um, yeah. So it kind of had the personal to stop Scott Johnson. But in a situation where suddenly it's not as much defensive people on the box, maybe Scott Johnson burns them for the fifth one. You're right. Absolutely. Play action throw. Oh, and no, go. going down. There we go. Sack on the play. That's Jaden Swift, a very talented Tulsa defensive line, gets finally to Joseph Green as Jaden Swift has number one of the day. 
And that's the third sack allowed on to Joseph Green today, this afternoon. And yeah. Yeah, was, you're right. The, the defensive talent is there. They are getting home. Um, you know, they're showing signs of it. Signs of what the talent can achieve. Yeah, you're right. I, I, we saw uh, Chris Andrews go around the for a, for a sack as well. Joseph Green passes the ball. Middle is oh, caught. Oh, 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 oh. John Blades, first down. And this Tulsa defense just cannot get off the field. They cannot. That was a heartbreaker. You're third and long. And Las Vegas converts into huge play. Well, let's take a look at the third downs of Las Vegas tonight. They are four of seven overall. In the second half, they're a perfect two for two. Just outstanding offense here by the Las Vegas Fury in the second half. And Scott Johnson will get the handoff, gets three yards. And at halftime, Mark, this was a 21 to 13 game. Uh, you could argue Tulsa had a little bit of momentum going into the half after you know scoring a field goal, mm -hmm. but it's been all Vegas here in the second half. Yeah, absolutely, all Vegas, and I mean they have been just like incredible. Like nothing more to say. They they they're handling their business here and showing why last week could have been the fluke. Yes, and uh, the offensive line, I think run blocking has been very underrated today as Scott Johnson immediately has a lot of open space he doesn't get the first down but is just about a couple centimeters shy of it it's kind of also better because you're still you know you're right more downs more time burned and absolutely so on and so forth I formation and I can bet a lot in Vegas that this is gonna go to Scott Johnson yeah, where else are you betting? In Las Vegas. In Las Vegas. There it is. Scott Johnson, first down. Four yards. <laughs> and at least two more minutes off the clock here. Yeah, the, so last season, Las Vegas finished six for six. Made the playoffs. Uh, lost in the quarterfinals to the eventual champions, Baltimore. So that is that was... A very good season for them looking back on it trying to get back on the playoffs this season and for week two we saw that near you know that great defensive play i think ramos this season this second week is showing what the heights that they can actually achieve i do agree with that you know this is the vegas fury team that we last season you know, yep. vegas fury team that nobody wanted to face in the playoffs um, you know, they started off 0-3. They finished the season very, very good uh, with a winning record. Uh, they finished the season, well, actually with a 6-6 six and six record, but we're good enough to get into the postseason. As this is going to go to Scott Johnson for no no gain on the play. And, um, you know, they the Vegas did win a playoff game last season. They, they got bounced um, right afterwards, but it's a, it's a very good team with very good leadership and very good players. And I mean, the champions did were the ones who bounced them, so kind of like exactly. Uh, it's fine that they got bounced that way because it, it was the event of champions. But John oh Blades goodness. touchdown fury, and I'm sorry I wasn't able to call that entire play, but Joseph Green is just throwing dimes out there. <laughs> they are not stopping. They keep playing aggressive, and they're like, uh, "You're gonna give this." Defense, you're going to give this to us. I will take it. The Tulsa Desperados was lulled to sleep. You could tell they were just reading the backfield, expecting for another handoff. And both the safeties and the corner just, you know, got caught picking in the backfield. And the ball was thrown over the heads for another score. As John Blades is having an absolute career day right now. Approaching 200 yards. The kick is up and good, 42-13. Yeah, and what, how about Joseph Green tonight? 336 yards, 21 of 28. That's 75% completion rate tonight. We were talking about his accuracy, you know, earlier on tonight. He has been on the money, finding his... It's not only the accuracy, but the situations where these throws have been made. They have been in coverage, in double coverage sometimes, and he just sticks it to his man. 
and his man gets it. Shout out to Mr. J Swear 42 in the chat sitting at a button. Appreciate you for watching the league and bon appetit. Man, I love Buffalo Wild Wings. I need I need to get some. Yeah, it's been forever since I had oh one my god. Buffalo Wild Wings. Oh my god, the nachos, man, those are good. Are we gonna get a sponsorship now from Buffalo Wild Wings? Uh, hey, I don't know, man. I, I would love to. <laughs> That'd be great for the next convention. Absolutely. Shotgun formation. Pump fake by JQ. The pass is going to be caught. Jason oh. Francis. Feeling 48-yard line. Max Jackson makes the stop. But a good job. Jason France has been one of the bright spots here in this offense. As that was his fourth catch of the day. Uh, getting past 50 yards. Yeah, we're going to see more of these huge passing attempts right now for JQ. Uh, which is kind of the nature of where the game is right now you don't have enough time so just keep throwing it downfield and we'll see more and more of those you know all these four receiver formations uh yeah four wide receiver set jq passes outside a pass is gonna for another first down a pickup of about 13 yards and that is gonna be actually a backup for the Tulsa offense, uh, that's uh, Radrick Davis, six foot, two hundred pounds, getting his first catch of the day. Split backs formation here. It's gonna be a quick out to Corey Jones. He's got six yards, make it a second and four. And we have a, an injured player. That's Chris Magel, second hurt player of the day. Uh, this may be kind of a concussion, unfortunately. You know, he was grabbing his head. He was, you know, he got his bell wrong. It was a heavy collision right there, Mark. It's unfortunate for them. Uh, we definitely don't don't enjoy seeing that in the game. We're hoping that he gets better, better and ready for next week. But, you know, still the entire unit doing well. Pass inside is caught again by Corey Jones for a pickup of about 10 yards. And they're going to go with an all huddle now rallying the troops on her center he's gonna throw again pass short he's gonna King Tiak, Washington gets one and the play and the uh no huddle is gonna continue I think they, they have to go to either Gabriel Manning or Corey Jones right here maybe Jason France yep to throw again Mike Michaels is wide open he has to collect himself though and he's gonna go slowly nowhere ball at the 15 yard line and they're not gonna remain to, in the no huddle not even to the out not able, able to take it outside not even that is going to be throwing oh. the ball underneath. Corey Jones has about five yards, but sadly not enough for a first. You know, obviously they have to go for it here. I mean, what, what do you have to lose? You're down 29. Absolutely, 29. Not even three right. scores. It's four. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Four scores down. This is going to be a shotgun straight formation. Look for J friends on a quick slant. JQ, Jason France, quick slant. Oh, oh my. Player. He didn't get it. It was a great play call, but he didn't get it. Maybe, maybe they're going to try it again. JQ passes inside, incomplete. Trying to go with J DJ Hume right there, and he didn't get it. Second and goal. Tulsa hanging on, but they're hanging on on the thread with a 10 ton weight on their feet. This is going to be a huge, steep mountain to climb. All right four scores you know they're gonna need a lot a lot of successful onside kicks i was gonna say can king jack washington point punch it in for a touchdown oh. a backup touchdown but they're gonna go with an empty set maybe a quarterback sneak no they're gonna pass jq passes outside and it's yeah. wide open for a touchdown a great call and a great execution right there by Corey jones and company Putting the ball in the end zone for the first offensive touchdown for the Desperados today. Yep, first offensive touchdown. Uh, JQ getting a very respectable 267 yards. And this drive, he's showing that, you know, he can sling it as well. Absolutely. Uh, this is going to be an extra point attempt to make it a 42-20 to 20 game. We are likely going to see 
a um, short kick, an onside. For everybody that is watching this on Buffalo Wild Wings, if you're hearing this, if you want to join this league, visit simulationfl.net. Join our Discord. You can create a player. Join the SFL Minor League. and You will be drafted to the pros and start your career. You can make an impact right away. Saw so, uh, a pick six by King Rashid early in the game. He's a rookie. And, uh, you know, many rookies throughout the league have done crazy, crazy plays as this on sides will go to Vegas and uh, no problem recovering. And that may just be the end of the game. We'll, of course, see more timeouts used by Tulsa and maybe force a punt. But a first down right here will essentially seal the deal. This is going to be a heavy set, and this is going to go to Scott Johnson, of course. <laughs> Nothing but blocking up front. Scott Johnson gets about... Say, uh, they're going to make it five yards to the 33 in the second and five. Yeah, and he's and, been consistent uh, about those yardage, like five yards, four yards. And Ramos, I tell you what, if you can get me four yards every single time, oh, I'll pay you the money. Absolutely. And the over-under for Joseph Green... Joseph Green's pass in the rest of the game is like 0 0.5, and I'm taking the under. High <laughs> formation here for the Las Vegas Fury. Scott Johnson will get the toad again. Uh, spin move, spin move again. Scott Johnson, oh. guy of the first down, gets a healthy gain of four yards, but it's going to be third and one coming up. It's a third and one, but for a team that has a player such as Johnson, that might as well be a third and negative one. Yeah, third and one. As the backups are in, actually. And look at that. Doug Britton is in the backfield. <laughs> Number 84, just like Cordero Patterson for the Atlanta Falcons. Doug Britton gets a handoff here. Hand off, Doug Britton. Oh. oh, he's gonna lose half a yard. That was cool though. That you know, yeah. Vegas, Vegas, you know, putting their their return man. It was just so reminiscent of the Atlanta Falcons. Um, unfortunately, he didn't get there. Two minute warning. They were just having some fun, Ramos. <laughs> they are. That they are. I mean, Doug Britton, you know, he's like Gerald Manning. He's a guy. You just give the ball to him and, and just, he's going to do something. Like, he, you know, you, you can hand it off to him, pass it to him. You can put him in kickoff returns and whatnot and, and just allow him to get a couple yards. Um, he didn't get that, unfortunately, for him. As the field goal by Rage is going to go up and good. And the Las Vegas Fury basically got to the over-under by themselves. 45-20. Yeah, lots of bright spots for this Las Vegas team. Uh, moving on to next week. Day Drury, by the way, on defense. 12 solo tackles. Boy, has he been playing out of his mind. Yes, he has. Yes, he absolutely has. Kickoff goes up, and Gary Lanning is going to return this one again. He's gonna go past the 25, making a spin move. Oh. And getting to the 28, almost got loose. And uh, we'll see if the Tulsa offense can make another score, can put another, put another touchdown on the board. You know, Vegas has pulled their starters. You know, it's obvious. Um, you know, up 25 points with a minute and 52 seconds left. So let's see if the Tulsa Desperados offense can take advantage of that with, you know, a deep throw or something. And Chris Magel is back on the field. Look at that, number 30. So he has clear concussion protocol. As the pass goes up and it's incomplete. Great job by Nicky Um Well, they wow. say Chris Magel has a broken <laughs> nose and he's saying he's out, but he's, like, he's I in. saw number 34 on the field, so he's in. <laughs> he must have been like, yeah, this will just take a quick visit to my plastic surgeon. We welcome you to those who watch the Lone Star Glory barely beat the London Knights 31-27.
This is the Las Vegas Fury and the Tulsa Desperados. Las Vegas in control of this one, 45 to 20, as JQ is going to throw the pass outside to Gabriel Manning. And he's got about eight on the play. But man, you know, shout out to, to, to Mr. Chris Mangle, number 34 of the Vegas Fury. You know, has a broken nose. He's right there in pain. It's complete garbage time. And he's still in there fighting for his team. They just taped him up. Who knows? There's a plastic surgeon within the team. And take a look at his nose and give him the thumbs up. But yeah, you're right. Coming back, fighting for his team. That's the kind of thing you want to see from your players. This pass is going to go incomplete. Oh. Steven McMichaels was the in And it's going to be a fourth and two. Obvious, you know, fourth down territory to go for. And you have nothing to lose. Fourth and two, ball at the 36, four wide receivers and a tight end with an empty set. Here for JQ. Q passes over the middle, caught. Gabriel Manning, good throw by the quarterback, JQ, as they're trying to go in the no huddle and try to score once more before the end of the game. Q passes inside, France, first down. Vegas playing some sort of prevent defense right now. Very soft zones. Q pump fakes, passes inside, caught again. Ooh. First down. That was Hansa Robinson with the catch. He's been quiet here in the second half. Q again. Plays again. The pass is going to be oh. tipped and intercepted. That's it. The veteran, multiple time all star Max Jackson gets the INT and the exclamation point. And off of a great deflection as well. Uh, but you're right, an interception to end this afternoon's game. For Las Vegas and Tulsa, they're just going to keep kneeling this down. Uh, well, there are still timeouts for Tulsa, so they might actually have to work for the first down still. But 58 seconds is inevitable. They're going to shotgun formation, so the backup wants to get on the stat sheet. And he will get in the stat sheet, but, but getting sacked. As <laughs> gets on the wrong side of the stat sheet. Yeah, Chris Andrews gets number two on the day for him. Uh, well, we're going to take a look at second and 18. As Cole Trickle is the quarterback. He's going to hand the ball off. He's had enough of getting sacked. This carry is a good one, though. For about, uh, I would say, seven or eight yards. That's also the backup halfback, Simon Phoenix. I wonder if Phoenix Jones got his first name out of Simon Phoenix. Maybe not. Maybe not. Well, this is also the... <laughs> Las Vegas Fury, whose logo is the Phoenix. So, yes, sir. perhaps, connections right there. Another throw by Trickle. This one is going to go middle. Caught by Mr. Doug Britton, Mr. Do-It-All, for a pickup of seven yards. And the Tulsa Desperados, who have no quit in them, are going to call a timeout and going to get the ball back. <clears throat> Yeah, and if you're Tulsa right now, really the first two weeks, you kind of want to just mulligan these two weeks. Uh, the first week was a tough loss, but this week is even tougher because they're missing Douglas Brown. You know, it feels yeah. like there would have been a bigger expectation of them making this a more competitive game uh, with Douglas Brown on the field. Really sorely missed. You could really feel it. And the way they played, they had a lot of packages for short passes and mm -hmm. th those kind of stuff. And you, you really think if Douglas Brown was on the field, he would have really enabled that kind of a package to be successful. I agree because, you know, he left very, very early in the game. He only had two oh, carries. 
Yep. So, you know, it's not like they lost him just in the fourth quarter. You know, he, he was gone from the very start of the football game as JQ will throw the ball deep. JQ had another interception. And that's Mr. Broken Nose, Chris Magel with the pick. <laughs> Broken Nose is not going to stop Chris Magel from making a huge defensive play. And, yeah, I, you're right. I'm surprised he's still on the field. You know, let's you, you think that contact on the field might just worsen that nose but i guess he's like you know i don't i don't mind about how i look off the field because they're not looking at my nose on the field anyway i'm telling you coach bond coach john bond is old school old school old school man <laughs> i don't care if you have a broken nose or a broken whatever you put your butt on the field <laughs> absolutely be a kneel down by the by the backup and it's gonna be the end of the game uh and Mark, a game that, has, that was completely dominated in the second half by Vegas. At halftime, this was competitive. It was 21-13, despite D uh, Douglas Brown not being on the field. It was an eight-point game, and the Vegas Fury ended up putting 24 points on the board in the second half and just running away with it. Absolutely. And the second half, you just credit this Las Vegas defense. They tightened up, allowed zero points uh, for this Tulsa Desperado team in the second half. And what a showing that was for this Tulsa Las Vegas team. So we're going to take a look at the post-game official stats. You know, total yards. I mean, Vegas more than 200 and something more than the Tulsa Desperados turnovers being a key part of it. Four t uh, turnovers for the Desperados offense, including a, a fumble by King Jack Washington and, and three interceptions by JQ. And now the question is, who's your player of the game, Mr. Mark Lopez? Oh. And um, suddenly, uh, that's a tough question, given the way yes. these players have played in Las Vegas. Like, even these defensive players, incredible. Like, you, you just look at Chris Magel, you know, uh, Merrick Itera with the four pass deflections and one interception. But my game ball, I got to give it to Scott Johnson. That four touchdowns is incredible. Like, what else can you ask from your running back? If he can score, if he can get you the yards, you might as well give him the game ball. I totally agree, and in this first two weeks of play, Scott Johnson has 400 rushing yards, which Whoa. is pretty insane. He's got about 180 today alone. We to show you the rest of the of the highlights. Joseph Green, though, I mean, 321 yards, had two touchdowns, did have two picks, which probably puts him a little bit uh, under Scott Johnson to me in the player of the game competition. Yep. But, uh, you know, you also have John Blades, who was incredible today. Yep, both him and Mason Kirby. Uh, Mason Kirby just one yard shy of 150 yards. Both those players, incredible tonight. Just hauling down passes, throwing their way, running routes incredibly well. Um, I mean, uh, yeah, it's, it's if you can't stop one aspect of the team, they just keep going back to it, and that's what they did. Scott Johnson is your player of the game, 181 yards oh, and four touchdowns. For Mark Lopez, I'm Ramos Lynn. This has been a presentation of the Simulation Football Final Score, Vegas 45, Tulsa 20. We'll send you back to SFL Studios for analysis and what's next after these messages. Stay tuned.